This is the 2011 Audi Q5 Quattro with the uh, eight-speed Triptonic transmission. It does have a turbo four-cylinder, which produces 211 horsepower, uh, which off the cuff might not seem like a ton, but when you consider the um, the small si relative small size of this vehicle, it's actually uh, quite capable and uh, has some good pep to it. So I'm just going to point out a few nice features of this uh, particular car. This car did not come with the onboard navigation. Uh, this is the main uh, control screen, however, that does give you um, all of the feedback that you want to know for your uh, sound system, which is down here. Um, it also lets you set variable parameters with the car, like the lighting system, the automatic door locks, uh, and of course it has the whole Bluetooth uh, integration as well. So, very neat feature, uh, very easy to read, um, very intuitive. Uh, it's pretty easy to use for the most part. You can see that the, it, there's corresponding words here and those correspond to the buttons down here. So overall very easy to use. car also features dual climate as you can see, dual climate control. Um, a little lighter in there. And uh, additional storage in here with some CD holders. I'm not sure how many people use CDs anymore though. And uh, it also does feature a, um, a hookup here for a, an iPod. So, kind of handy. You could plug your iPod in right there, and it has, actually has a nice little cradle that pulls out for your iPod or iPhone, I guess. And um, yeah, so overall, very, very good. Uh, the sound system's really nice. I realize that sounds like crap on the video, but trust me, in here it sounds really loud, really clear, and uh, probably one of the better sounding audio systems that I've heard in a car. It doesn't support the USB uh, devices, but it does have this handy little uh, SD card reader here, and you can put your MP3 files on there like I have right now, and play them off of that. So that's a very handy feature. Um, very easy to read, nicely laid out analog gauges. Uh, it does have an information screen here that will point out uh, different things to you like uh, well you can see now I got it hooked up to my phone so it'll you know I can scroll through my phone book go through the phone numbers as I'm driving uh, without taking a whole lot of eye, eye movement off the road I guess but um, very nicely uh, fit and finish uh, interior here it doesn't have your typical door locks as you might notice see there's no lock there no lock there uh, it does have a red light however that will turn on uh, when the doors are locked so this doesn't have the uh, blind spot indicators, but in the mirror, in the side mirror here, you'll see a little dot there on the left, far left. Uh, that's a, basically just a turn signal. I'll turn my, you can see it flash in there. So, uh, kind of a neat little touch. One of the cool things about this car, let me go ahead and pull over here and as I point this out, it has a really nice sunroof system, and you'll see here. So, going up here, as you'll see the control knob for the sunroof, uh, inside here is the button to move back the, the screen I'll do that now and you'll see that the screen opens up a very nice large window pane on the roof has a nice view for the rear passengers as well uh, obviously that part of the glass does not open but uh, go back here and turn this knob you'll see that the sunroof opens up like that so very nice touch uh, if you like sunroofs, it's probably one of the nicer ones that I've seen and uh, very easy to use. Uh, the, the only drawback of this system, of course, is that you don't have a true uh, ceiling line and the fact that all the best you can hope for is the, uh, the mesh screen, which I'll roll back now and you can kind of see what I'm saying. Um, so if that's something that you can't live with, then this might not be the car for you. But, you know, I think for me it provides enough privacy and uh, definitely doesn't allow... Uh, bright sun to come in which is nice so uh, overall I'm very very happy with the interior quality of this car uh, one other interesting point here is that unlike most of the push button start systems I've seen so far this one does actually use the entire remote that slides in here and I know some of the BMWs do that as well so um, you know it's a little bit different but basically like I got the car running now I just push it in to turn that off and uh, pull out um, the entire remote but uh, of course this is an Audi. So the main thing about Audi, of course, is their legendary road feel, their performance, their handling, uh, 
and just being all-wheel drive and having that, that added benefit so the uh, interesting thing is about this transmission too in terms of its shifting is it is a little bit different than some of the ones I've come across in, in uh, other cars as you can see here, it has the standard D mode. By the way, it's the electronic parking brake. It's kind of cool. Uh, standard drive mode. Um, you can shift it over here, and you can you can go up and down for manual mode. Uh, however, it also has a sport mode here with the S, and uh, that shifts to much much more aggressive shift patterns. You can definitely notice uh, when you start driving the car a little bit more aggressively um, how much quicker it seems to pick up. So I'm going to go ahead and take it out on the road here. As soon as the traffic's clearing, you'll hopefully get an idea of what I'm talking about here. So I'm going to leave it in the sport drive mode for now. And uh, we'll tur turn here right now. So a little bit of turbo leg, not bad. But you can, I think you can hear and see the shifting that uh, you notice too, it'll, it'll hold the RPMs a little bit higher when I'm in sport mode. Uh, so right now at about 3,000, just drop down into the next gear but uh, if I if I give it much gas at all I mean it's gonna hold see that there it sticks at four a little bit longer so yeah it does it does uh, give a nice performance um, increase to the shifting patterns which I like a lot so uh, the thing that I have absolutely loved about this car however it's got to be the handling I mean I'll take it here on in a little bit on some short roads or some windy roads rather and uh, hopefully give you an idea of what that's like I know it's kind of hard to translate in video but um, the tightness of the steering, the uh, the tightness of the overall car, um, does ha does, in my opinion, um, really show where this car excels at. And, you know, and then, well, it is an Audi, so uh, it's just very little body roll. It's very tight. I know some people aren't going to like to ride as much as maybe cars that that give up a little bit some of that. But if you're a dr if you want a driver's car that lets you feel the road then this would definitely be the car for you. I mean, you can almost feel the tires gripping on the pavement. It's it's a very cool feeling, uh, one that I like. With the 2011 Q5, Audi has developed a smaller crossover SUV that's priced from the mid-30s to low-40s, which delivers on the legacy Audi handling, ride, road feel, and power that we've come to expect. If this at all sounds like your type of vehicle, then I would highly encourage you to seek out your local Audi dealer and give one a test drive today.